r slash ask reddit posted by reddit user toaster boast paranormal or not what's the scariest thing to ever happen to you when i was around seven or eight i'd ride my bike in my neighborhood i did this almost every day i had houses i'd stop at regularly and hang out with people i now realize these adults are really nice and they put up with my dumb ass every day and i love them for it but one day while I was riding, I saw a purple beat up van pull up on our street. We lived at the entrance. I paid no mind, but knew they didn't live here. They never passed me. They kept driving behind me, following me. My street ended in a cul-de-sac and had a second cul-de-sac that branched off. I cut the main one real quick and turned down the second and stopped when I saw people outside and I circled and watched the van. They made a quick U-turn in the main cul-de-sac, just like I did, and waved at me as they drove up the street. I'm a thousand percent sure I would have been kidnapped if those people weren't outside the house I stopped at. I was staying at a hotel. I woke up around 2 a.m. screaming, with our fire alarm going off. People I was staying with calmed me down. We left our room and realized the rest of the hotel is silent. As soon as we left the room, the alarm in our room stops. We report to the receptionist, who said they have no account of the alarm going off. We return to our room and have no issues, aside from the severe lack of sleep. Apparently, the alarm had been going off for a solid 30 seconds before I remember waking up, and I had been running around the room screaming during that time. I have no recollection of that. No clue what it could have been but something that truly haunts me thinking about it. One night, me and my best buds were walking through a neighborhood. It must have been maybe 8 o'clock or 9 at night. Southern California in the summer, so you know, a little bit of light was still out. We were walking in the neighborhood, not really paying attention to anybody, when all of a sudden, a black truck with a lift kit was driving towards us. Now, we made some sort of silly motion towards it. I honestly don't remember what was it about, but it wasn't threatening. We weren't making fun of the guy. But for whatever reason, this truck pulled into a house, made a U-turn, and went after us. It was the scariest few seconds of our lives. Me being the heavier guy in the group, had a hard time catching up with the rest of my buds. We ran through the neighborhood, one that we knew very well but the truck kept following us. We eventually ran to a friend's house, but he wasn't there. Thankfully for us, his dad was there. He let us in, and we explained the situation. He went outside with his gun and looked around. That truck had followed us in, but once he saw the dad with a gun, he backed out. The windows were tinted, so we never got a good look at who was in the truck. I have to admit, it might have been our own fault for being out that late, for making gestures at people we don't know. But the scariest thing was, why would he want to attack kids? If we did nothing to him, why would he want us? I was making a late night pickup at a historical home where there had been a wedding. I was greeted at the front by the security guard who was locking up certain areas. There was a couple stragglers here and there, but not that many people. He showed me where I needed to pick up some of the items, and then let me know that there were a few chairs upstairs that were left behind. Me being the idiot, I decided to go up there by myself and get the job done quicker. I walked upstairs and started loading my cart full of chairs and tables. In the hallway, I saw a little girl with a bow in her hair and a nice dress on. I talked to her, said hello, and... Did she enjoy the party? She never spoke, but she did nod her head, and she smiled at me. I thought it was odd that a little girl would be there that late, but I'm not one to judge. As I made my way down from the upstairs, I again saw the security guard. He was a great guy, he even helped me load up my truck. I slammed the door shut and noticed that he started locking up the main door. I said, hey, 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 there's a little girl up there think she might be with somebody. He gave me a strange look. 
There is no children invited to this wedding. There would have been no little girl. My heart skipped a beat as I started to notice a perverted smile come upon the security guard's face. Oh, he must have met Alice. Alice? Yeah, she died here. Um, 50, 60 years ago, maybe? Yeah, everybody reports seeing her every once in a while. Let me guess. Bow, nice dress, doesn't talk much. At this point, my blood ran cold. I don't even think I said goodbye to the security officer. I just hightailed it out of there. Yeah, I won't be doing any more late night pickups, I think. I should preface this by saying that my walk to work and my walk home is typically a 15 minute endeavor. It was Halloween night, 2005. I was walking home from work. I had stayed over just a bit to help a customer. The walk home entailed maybe two crosswalks in a busy area. My son was at home waiting for trick-or-treating and Halloween festivities. I got to the final crosswalk and decided to look down. I noticed my shoe was untied, and even though the light had said go, I decided to quickly tie it real fast. It took me no more than maybe a second or two. I started walking through, and about halfway through the crosswalk, a work van flew out of nowhere and missed me by a hair. Had I been a second later, the van would have hit me and surely would have killed me. The van ended up hitting a car on the other side. I was stunned, shaking. I couldn't move until the police got there. I was literally holding up traffic in the middle of a crosswalk. My boss was driving by, comforted me. I was terrified. He drove me the last hundred feet to my house. That's how far away I was. When I walked in, my son looked distraught. He saw me crying, and I tried to explain what happened. But he was only nine. He really didn't understand. To this day, I wonder if that untied shoe was a sign from God, karma, or whatever. I'm really glad I wasn't wearing my strap-ons that day. As stupid teenagers, some friends and I ding-dong ditched a house in the neighborhood. We rarely saw the owner. He kept kind of to himself. We rang the doorbell and took off in different directions. I hid under the deck of a house a couple houses down and waited. Two minutes went by before I heard gunshots. I was way too worried that one of my friends had been shot, but I was too nervous to move. Finally, I mustered up the courage to run back towards my friend house. But as soon as I got to the street, I see the owner of the house and his jeep coming the opposite direction. I was thinking, wow, great timing. I could tell he slammed on the gas at the side of me, so I ran as fast as I possibly could down the road. I cut across an open yard about 30 yards where he saw me, and I was able to cross another street essentially losing him. I know he was going to run me over. I made it back to my friend's house and vomited. Everyone was okay, thankfully. A friend mentioned that he saw the guy shooting the gun into the air, but he had put the gun in the jeep with him. I grew up a lot that day. As an independent latchkey kid growing up, I really never had a ride home from anyone. Every once in a while, my dad took a day off and he'd pick me up, but it was pretty rare. One day, for no reasons that I can remember, my older sister picked me up with her boyfriend. At the time, she was dating this douchebag named John with a single cab truck. God, I hated him. But I digress. They picked me up at school, but said I wouldn't fit, due to me being a large kid in a single cab. But they said I would be able to lay in the back of the truck bed because we only lived five minutes away. In California, it's illegal to ride in the cab. So I had to stay down and keep quiet. Yeah. It's not my older sister's best course of judgment, but I think she was in high school, and that dude influenced her in such a poor manner. But being a kid, I just listened to her and hopped in the truck bed. The beginning of the ride was fine, but as soon as we got on the main highway, this jackass started driving crazy, speeding, cutting lanes. I was terrified. At the time, I was embarrassed to say it, 
but I really thought I was gonna die. My body slid side to side really hard, and the shitty truck bed door kept opening slightly. Honestly, I can remember crying a little and asking God if he would help me. We finally came to a stop. What was supposed to be a five minute ride felt like an hour. I got up and didn't say anything and ran into my room. I was so upset, but I did notice immediately that there had been a voicemail from my mom's work on the landline. Early 2000s, no cell phones for kids. The message said, My name, call me when you get home. She sounded panicked. I called her. By this time, I had calmed down. She answered, but she didn't say hello. She just said, Baby, are you okay? I hesitated and told her, Yeah, I'm fine, why? And she said, I, I just got the surge that you were in danger or were being hurt. I was just worried. It's been well over a decade, and that message never leaves me. That eerie feeling of human connection, that love a mother and son share, it has me questioning whether humans are meant to feel more than just the normal connections between each other. <laughs>